Today's gonna be a good day because that behind me is the LG C10 OLED TV. And in this video, we're gonna unbox it and set it up. So stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. Now, if you're new here, then on this channel, we review, demo, and compare TVs like this, especially like this. So if you're into that and you're new here, then you should definitely hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. Now, I'll be reviewing and comparing this TV to the 2020 Samsung QLED and reviewing it, but before that, we have to unbox. So, here we go. First up, we have unboxing instructions, but that's my job today. First, we have the TV backplate and a big bag of stuff, including the magic remote, batteries, screws, and the conversion cable. There's also a cable tie and a sticker, which is new. Now, if this is your first time seeing one of my videos, then you may not know this, but if you need a flat surface to actually place the TV on so you can install a stand, you can use the box that the TV came in and use the styrofoam to act as structural support. And the last piece we have is the back part of the stand, which acts as the weight to keep the TV steady, and it's a chunky boy. And just like the C9 OLED from last year, you have to assemble a stand before you attach it to the TV. So to assemble the stand, you need to combine these two. So this groove lines up with this indentation right here. So all you have to do is slide it in like that. And there are three screws that you need to fasten. One, two, and three. Now all seven included screws are the same, so it doesn't matter what three you use. Now all you have to make sure to do is that the metal plate is facing forwards and the weight is facing backwards. And just place it down and it's secure, but of course you don't want to let go until you actually have the screws in place. It's not that secure. And for those of you wondering, this process is exactly the same as the C9. The TV comes in a 55, 65, and 77 inch screen size and will also have a 48 inch version available later on in 2020. It's a native 4K 120Hz panel and supports all the major HDR standards including HDR10, Dolby Vision, and Hybrid Log Gamma. It supports G-Sync, FreeSync, and HDMI 2.1's VRR variable refresh rate. It has LG's Alpha 9 Gen 3 AI processor for picture processing and upscaling and has 4 HDMI 2.1 ports and 2 USB 2.0 ports. It supports Alexa, Google Assistant and Apple HomeKit. It also has a 2.2 channel built-in 40 watt speaker system. Alright, so let's see what this setup is all about. Press the OK button, wheel, on your remote. Language and location settings. Confirm your location and language settings. Language, English, button. <laughs> guidance is currently turned on to assist the visually impaired. Do you want to keep audio guidance turned on? I do yes. not. All right, so once you've actually set this, set your location and your time zone, and you go to your connected devices, and I have two HDMI devices connected, so, Let's see if it actually recognizes them. Ooh, this remote is very finicky. It's not very calibrated right now. The remote was behaving weird, but I think once I just jostled it a little bit, it actually started working properly. Once you connect your Wi-Fi, then you go to the terms and conditions. So, so to actually use you, uh, YouTube and other internet-based services, you have to agree to both the terms of use and the privacy policy. 
but not necessarily interest-based advertising. I mean, that's especially a personal preference thing, but I personally don't like giving away all my information as much as we live in that kind of society right now, but that's another story. So once you agree to the terms and service and it tries to find connected devices, it asks you what kind of cable service you have. And I have cable through, uh, connected through my HDMI cable. So I select that one, which was the first choice. Next, and then you enter your zip code so it can bring in TV guide information. Oh wow, this sounds pretty good. So the AI picture is essentially saying that it identifies faces or identifies specific objects and sharpen them like the space and it also enhances the contrast on these objects so a uh, dark object on a bright background. AI sound also seems to increase the high range frequency of the sound. Right now without AI sound it has a very pronounced low end but if I turn on AI sound pro you can hear. So the mids and the highs get boosted significantly. personal preference. I, I rather leave AI Picture Pro off and Sound Pro off so I can see how the TV performs just de facto. Now once you select your service provider you go next to see if you can control the setup box with your remote. But I don't need it to be controlled so I'll just skip. <laughs> They're saying if you agree to the terms and conditions, you are able to use real time internet, TV, and content services. So, Prime Video et al. So, if you didn't, then you cannot use those. Now that we finally have the TV here, I'll be doing a bunch of videos on this TV, including a comparison with the Samsung 8K QLED TV because I know a bunch of you out there want to see that. So that is definitely coming up. So definitely subscribe if you have not already. Also, I'll be doing uh, gaming testing. So I want to test the FreeSync performance. I don't have a G-Sync graphics card in my computer, but I have an ATI card. So I want to test the FreeSync capability to see if it's actually is performing if it's actually performs up to 120 frames per second in gaming. I'll also be performing a screen test similar to the one I did on the Samsung Q80T QLED TV where I test the reflectivity of the screen and also the tone mapping performance and how it performs with a lot of ambient lighting which I think will be a very interesting test. As far as first impression goes, the TV has that very distinct OLED pop which is very contrasty and the colors are very vibrant. The design hasn't changed much from last year's C9. The stand looks very similar. It's not 100% the same but it's very similar and the TV is as thin as ever. It also has EARC which is Enhanced Audio Return Channel so it can send an uncompressed signal from the TV to your receiver or a connected device say like a Blu-ray player through the TV to your receiver. The TV has a bunch of motion enhancement settings enabled out of the box, so I personally turned them off because I think the picture looks much better without them. And I'll be showing you those settings in my best picture settings video that I'll be also publishing, so stick around for that. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts and what videos you want to see on this TV. 
Also, if you want to help support this channel so we can bring you more content like this, then feel free to buy your TV using the links in the description, even if it's not this particular TV. Or you can check out the merch store where you can get cool t-shirts like this one and more. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it or found it helpful, and thanks for watching. Until next time, this has been your friend in neighborhood villa man saying, be safe, peace.